Um, okay. So I'm going to go a little bit more into depth of linear regression. Because I feel like with linear regression, if you can get a pretty solid understanding of linear regression, you can essentially understand a huge range of stats because like basically linear regression, every, all, uh, a whole variety of statistical models are a form or an extension of linear regression. So like logistic regression is just a, an extension of linear regression. Uh, you can do an ANOVA inside of linear, with a linear regression. You can do t-tests with a linear regression. Um, you can do, like, it, with just some slight changes, you can do, um, well, it's not slight. It's quite, quite substantial changes. You can do, like, mixed, mixed effects modeling. So, like, have fixed effects with random effects. So you can take into consideration. Like, so, for example, for my stuff, um, longitudinal modeling, using mixed mixed modeling you can allow yourself to be able to model over time uh and again that's kind of just like a, an extension of linear regression so if you can understand linear regression you have a pretty solid understanding of most stats so that's why i wanted to go over linear regression in particular now this isn't going to be too heavy on this on the coding because i'm going to show some formula um, but, okay, so, um, if you open up your R Studio and create a new, either R Notebook or R Markdown, it doesn't matter, you can just call it whatever you want, regression. Okay. Oh. So it'll when you create like a new R, R markdown file, you can just um, delete all of these extraneous stuff. So all that's left is just the YAML header. So if you remember, this is just called the YAML header, uh, and then nothing else. So let me know when you've done that. You can save it. There you go. <clears throat> so in the meantime, um, you can still you can still write this. So the nice thing we're using R Markdown is if you do have any like formula, you can use uh, LaTeX symbols within the R Markdown. So I don't know if you're, if you know what uh, LaTeX is, but it's a, it's a way of, of uh, it's another way of writing up documents. So like there's Word, um, there's Markdown, there's uh, LaTeX, and LaTeX allows you to create really pretty PDFs. So it's, it, it's, it's nice if you have like a book that you really want to make super pretty because the typesetting is beautiful. Like it makes some very nice typesetting, like the font, the way it deals with font is uh, LaTeX. So L-A-T-E-X. Um, but it's technically a programming language of its own. So there's some hurdles that you have to cut across in order to really make use of, of LaTeX. That being said, like you can use Markdown to convert to LaTeX. So I, I would always recommend learn Markdown. And if you're curious about how to make beautiful PDFs later on, then you can go into to LaTeX. Uh, but so if you do dollar sign dollar sign, that starts up um, math mode within uh, within Markdown. So in this case, I'm going to say y is equal to alpha. Oh, I guess before before doing that, um, do you know what the formula is for? Just the simple formula for linear regression. The maths. The math. Y equals to a x. 
It's close enough, yeah. Um, this is more of like the, you almost had it. This is more of the, but see, the, the nice thing about using R Markdown is that it, it pops up what it will look like, the formula of what it will look like. So this is like the traditional way that you would write the formula. Uh, I'll show you like the more simplified version. Or non Greek symbol version. But the alpha, so the y is the predictor variable. Alpha is. Oh, we, do, we write this in the other way. Yeah, I'll show you. There's several ways of, of doing it. I mean, like, they're just symbols okay. in meaning, right? But the alpha would be the intercept for the line. X is the predict. Oh, sorry, sir. Y is the dependent variable. Yes. X is the independent or predictor variables, and then beta is the slope, essentially. And then the E is the error term, so whatever is remaining that uh, can't be explained. So, uh, if we, uh, in school we, were, we wrote this, uh, X with A, and we don't have it as well as X with A? Yes. You mean the alpha? Yes, alpha with A, yes. Uh. Alpha X plus and I know everything in that way. So this is like this is another way of writing it. But it's the same. Yeah, like okay, this is okay. another way of writing it. It's like M. I don't know why M. I guess what you said A yes. also works. Yes, why yes, is yes. A? Do you also do B? Yes. Yeah. What, what does B mean again? The beta. So the estimate. Okay. The slope. That's why. I'll get into why beta and B is. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll get into it a little bit more about what exactly the beta is. Uh, and then again, the E is just the, the residual, the remaining, the error. So whatever else is not able to take into consideration. Oh, it's very good. It looks like Yep. Well, it, it does use the LaTeX underneath. Um, so, this is the formula, like the simplified formula for it. Um, so if you were ever curious about, like if you ever see this, you know that, that just means like a linear regression. Now what it looks like if there's multiple variables within it, within the, within the, the model, it would look like uh, y is equal to, oops, y is equal to m, plus x1, beta, uh, let's just do b1, plus x2, b2, plus x n, b n, like any math this is pretty like abstract and there's no like it's kind of hard to be able to understand like humans like to be able to see how you apply it if and unless you're that special type of person that is in math and you can be like oh it's like it's not so abstract i don't need any foundation reality like most people will be like ah, it's a formula i don't know what What were you trying to say? Uh, I'd like to ask if I want to take this and put it on the slide. The question, not in the board, because I can output a uh, little bit in the board, but in the slide. In, this, in a slide? Yes, the questions. Uh, the equations? You yes. can uh, you can screenshot it. You, you can uh, right. so create. So, so there's um, those. 
remember, but you can use Beamer, which okay. uses LaTeX to create PDFs. So that will include them. You can use uh, HTML to create slides, uh, and that will include them. Uh, there's a couple of ways of, of, of allowing yourself to be able to have to use this. Use these, uh, so pretty. <laughs> yes, it's so pretty. I used one yesterday from the presentation with your supervisor. I had my committee meeting yesterday. Okay, nice. And I used uh, this equation for the mixed models. Uh, but I, ha I had it from a friend that made it in LaTeX, so I didn't have to make it again. Gotcha. But I had the, um, this question, how can output in a slide? This was my question. Yeah. Yeah, if you were to use uh, PowerPoint, you'd have to you'd have to like take a screenshot. Of yes. Um, so this would be like this would be the first predict. So like let's just pretend like you're saying I want to predict the, the height of the person. So if you know the if you know the sex of the person, that would be like sex. So you, you could say you know if you're a male, you're more likely going to be taller. Um, if you're I don't know, Dutch. It's probably they're one of the tallest. The, the tallest like, people. Yeah. So they're they they would be so like that would be a strong predictor for and, and so on. So like a bunch of like predictors of, of what the actual height would be. Um, now the reason why I'm showing this is that This helps you understand what exactly adjustment is, and I'll get into that uh, later. But like, adjustment is kind of a tricky thing, and people just like usually just throw like when you adjust for things in a model, like confounders and whatever. Um, people often just like throw everything into the model. Like there's like oh like we'll just put all this stuff in the model. If you look at the, the actual formula and how adjustments work, sometimes that's not actually appropriate and can actually introduce bias uh, into the model. Uh, like, let's just say, for example, I'm trying to think of a, I can't remember the specifics of it, but. Um, it's called a collider variable. So, like, like in 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 one case, if uh, a certain value of something is dependent on two other terms, so depending on both things. Yeah. So, like, like if, yeah, one, right. if, if one, if uh, one, you know what? I'm going to get into it. I'll get I'm get into it a little bit more, but. Yeah, like um, the example that Dr. Farber used in class was there's no point in including both height, weight, and BMI. Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, your, that's a very good example of like because height and weight make up BMI. Make up BMI, yeah. Um, and so if you, I mean, that's maybe more over adjustment. Uh, so if you, if someone can do BMI or, um, or BMI and, and height, or weight and height in this case, right? Yeah, yeah, weight and height, or just BMI. I'm gonna hold on. Oh, I really do want to. Just trying to think of. Uh, name of an example example there we go no nah, that's not very useful Uh, you know what? Oh. Anyway, you know if I'm I'm not gonna get into it too much, but like if it's that model up there, um, like the A and the B, and the B, and the B and the 
did kind of chat with our office statistician recently that was like on that topic, like kind of having that go back to my research. And, yeah. Sure, for, yeah. Um, well, so like the, the thing before was like, say there's two variables, say um, this is whether or not someone's vegan, that's their socioeconomic status. And then the pen is their cardiovascular disease risk. Those two are obviously related even though they're both predictors, independent predictors of cardiovascular disease risk, whether or not someone's vegan and whether or not they're rich or poor are sort of interrelated. So they confound each other, but then also like you want to include both of them in the model, but so then like, how do you proceed? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's a specific example of a collider, but that's close. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it, that's a close, uh, Maybe I'll, I'll send you guys an email of the exact example. I should have looked into this a little more. But anyway, I'm, I'm whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll go on to the getting hung up on details here. Yeah, it's <laughs> Okay. So this is the basic formula. Now let's put that into something that's more tangible that we can relate to. So if we do some code and we're going to use um, a data set that's inherent within that's uh, included within every everybody's uh, within R and it's called uh, state dot In the first one, we're going to do fit one lm. Oh, first off, sorry. Yes. I'll just type this out quickly and then stop to let you guys catch up and then explain. So in this case, I'm just converting it into a data frame, putting it into something that's just called um, like something smaller to write it, and looking at the, the variable names. So in this case, the, uh, LN is the linear model, and that's the way that you interact with uh, running linear regression within R. <coughs> Um, murder would be the predictor. So, sorry, murder would be the dependent variable, so the y. The tilde is like kind of like saying equals income. So this is the predictor. So you're saying, if I know the income of the state, I can predict the murder rate. Then you have to include the data. So in R, this is considered a formula. Uh, uh, and it's one of the advantages of using R is because then you can just like be able to write out very similar to how you would in math, uh, and then be able to run a, a linear regression or whatever statistical. So sorry, uh, the independent variable is the income, right? The income, yeah, independent. Okay. Yes. 
so right now it's just a simple linear regression. It's only got two variables in it. This is, in fact, no different than, um, or very similar to uh, correlation, because there's only two. And then summary just be able, like, lets you see the results of this uh, linear model. So if we look at it, but so it outputs a bunch of stuff. The main thing that you're that, that will be of interest is the coefficients. So there's the intercept, which is the m from the equation, and income. It gives the estimate. So the intercept is at 13. So that's 13% murder rate. The estimate is, well, then there's standard error, the t-value, and the, the probability that it's, that it's different than zero. Or the probability, well, I, I don't want to get into the probability. Okay. Um, so if we go back, To the equation, this we could translate this into being murder is equal to intercept plus uh, income times beta. So if we wanted to solve for this equation, what number would we, this is the easy one, what number would we put in for intercept? And, uh, intercept estimate? Yes. So it would be 13.5. So we type in 13.5 here. For beta, what would we put for beta? Estimate and beta are the same meaning. So the, the estimate for the income, yeah. Yes. So the beta would be this. So that is the slope. In this particular case, it's the slope. Okay. Oh, so the intercept is alpha because that's the intercept. You literally intercept. Yeah. Plus x plus b. X x b. Yeah. So if we wanted to solve for this and find out the predicted murder rate, we put, let, we'll put in. So murder is equal to 13.5 plus income times 0 0.0013. So how would we be able to interpret this? Like, how would we be able to like solve for it? If we wanted to say, if we wanted to, uh, like this estimate here is, like if we wanted to find out the, S, the intercept, we would make that, like in math, how would you get rid of this? Divide by zero point zero zero one three. Get rid of this whole thing. 
as the income uh, increases, the possibility, the risk to... But if you just wanted to find out the estimate, I mean, we already know the estimate, but if yes. we wanted to make it so okay. that only the estimate would subtract income on 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0
so the alpha is 14.3% as before. Um, and then the B1 is the income estimate, and the B2 is the population estimate. Okay. And the, we don't know the X1, the X2, that's what we just get from the data, right? Exactly. Precisely, yeah. Uh, so if we were to write it out, R is equal to 14.3 plus income times plus population times Let's pretend that this income is your actual variable that you're interested in using as a predictor. And let's pretend that population is the confounding variable. So the bigger the population, more likely there's going to be a bigger income. Let's just pretend. So you want to like be able to adjust for that fact. And also the fact that like population likely means if it's a bigger population, it probably will have higher murder rates. Who knows? We're just we're just like guessing here, pretending like that's the founder of it. How would you be able to solve for this? Saying I'm taking into consider, I'm adjusting for population, and I'm interested in how, what the effect of income is on murder. How would you be able to solve for that equation? Maybe you should So it's like. Let's say, like, so So typically when you're reading papers, they say, I'm, we control for all these variables. Um, and they're really only interested in one, like, uh, in this case, this predictor variable. They're not interested in the confounders. They're interested in the predictor variable, right? They're saying, okay, we're going to control for a population just for it. But what we're really interested in is the role of income on murder rate. How, how, when, when you hear that, how does it translate to this? How do you be able to find that? Um, the point of the population um, is associated with income, so the beta coefficient changes, actually, after you put everything in the model, rather than you examine this one by one. Right, but so, so this, this is the model, this is the model here. How do you be able to isolate just the income? Why just isolate? Pardon? I isolate just income? Yeah. How do you isolate just income from this equation? Because that's what adjusting is, is you're just isolating this. So right now, we have two unknown variables, right? Income. We have income and we have population. So if population was zero, yes, the income would have only one unknown variable. Then we have only one unknown variable. That is what adjustment is. When you set it to zero, you get rid of it. That's how you interpret this. The role of these two things is um, this. This the role of income on uh, on murder rate has a slope of this, right? Yes. So that means that for every unit increase of income, while all other are held constant. This changes by this. Because that way we only have one thing that's changing is income. That's what we're interested in. So one of the best ways of doing that is to make this zero. So we, we get it zero and it gets rid of it out of the model. Then you're not adjusting for it. This is adjusting. You're ignoring it. 
when when it calculates, if you if you remember the the slope before the change, okay. Yeah. So when it calculates the beta of all of these things and the intercept, it's already picked. It takes into consideration what you have available, and it takes into consideration the murder, the murder rate. So you can get like that's the line. Okay. So it takes that into consideration when it calculates these things, and then once you have the model built, then you say, okay, now that I do have the model built. How can I find out what the role of just income is on murder rate? And so one of the simplest ways to all your of setting it to zero. Yes. So this is what the collider variable problem is. Is if you were to set everything to a zero or set them to a constant, let's say you include um, a population of uh, here's a good example maybe of like of um, BMI, no weight. Weight with um, weight with sex and muscle mass. So, if you were to set them to zero, like the muscle mass, like uh, uh, this is why this is another reason why I scale is because when you scale it, you set it to zero. The mean, so the mean is now zero, so it makes it easier to interpret. So you say when the mean. Is zero. So when the variable when is average. zero, yeah, yeah, the, the average, then you can remove it. So when the constant is at the mean, right? Because so in this case, not yeah, zero makes no practical sense. Doesn't make any sense exactly. Yeah. There's no such thing as a population of zero. It doesn't exist. Right. Right. Uh, well, I mean, it probably does exist, but I mean, <laughs> in in states, yeah. in states within in, within a country, there's no okay. jurisdiction that has a zero population. There's always going to be a population, and that's why it's it's kind of important to. To take that into consideration with your covariates, because sometimes these things are impractical. Yes. Nobody is ever going to have a, a weight of zero. So if you change it to something that's interpretable, you can you can also be able to sure, understand what's going on with the model. But we'll take that go back to that example. If you have a higher muscle mass, that likely means that your weight is also higher, right? So if you set them both to zero. You're like, okay, I know that the mean of of uh, muscle mass, we set it to zero, and the mean of weight will be zero. Maybe there might be some overlap between somebody who has like yes. a certain amount of muscle mass. But then if you include sex in that model, if you're male, you're more likely to have more muscle mass, right? So in, in the case of uh, the gender, it's a... It's a uh, not a scale variable. It's, an it's not a scale variable. Yes. So it's, it's zero, either zero or one. So that means that zero is not something uh, numerical. It's like a symbol. It's still a number, but how you interpret that number is different. It's, it's an integer it's, that has only two things: zero or one. But it's not a real number. In that case, it could be a color, yellow or green. Yeah, I see what you mean because you're not yes. setting for zero in that case. You're setting them all to be so, male or all to be female. Yes, know. so that exactly. Is. But that's exactly that is exactly it. Is when you adjust for stuff. When you say I'm adjusting for sex, you're saying when you keep it constant and you set it to zero, and it, with a categorical variable like sex, you're saying for this particular population, and depends on how you set zero. So maybe it's female, maybe it's male, but whatever you set zero as. Within the model, you're saying the zero being male. So that's kind of one of the reasons why you have to like take it in, into consideration what you're actually putting into the model. So, that's why it gets okay. tricky is you can't just throw everything into a model because sometimes it doesn't make any sense. So in that case, uh, if we had, let's say, uh, males as a zero, and if we adjust for gender, that means that we have only... Sex. Yes, for sex. Yeah, so apparently gender is something else. Gender is social, like, like uh, yeah, like gender would be uh, yeah, like that's a big conversation. It's another, yeah, <laughs> okay. biological so, sex. Yeah. Gender okay. used to be binary, now it's not. Yeah. Okay, so if we ask for sex, that means we have zero, and let's say we put there zero. Yes. Only females. In the model, yes. when you're holding a constant, yes. If you did want to see what the effect of female would be, then you would change it to one and include the estimate in the equation. So then yes. because you no longer have that randomness, so you're only interested in one variable income, 
And so you change sex to be one. So you solve for this equation. And then, so one will be one times whatever the slope is. So then it'll equal out to that plus the income. And if we want to change to do this the opposite, we are change the, the, the model um, by, let's say, females be zero. If we want just for males, you change it to one. We change, and that's it? Just change it to one. Can we include both genders, both sexes? In the Not possible. It's either zero or one. And I'll, I'll get into some other stuff too. Um, so it's actually adjusting for, for one. Essentially, yeah. You are in, when it calculates the betas, it does take into consideration the differences between, but the betas still, you're still holding everything else constant. So you're still saying, and the easiest way to, to best be able to interpret this is by making everything zero, because then it, this is the only thing that remains. But if you were to say like, um, uh, sex would be one, because you're interested in, in males or females or whatever one is, then you do have to put that into the equation of saying, okay, that's the slope plus whatever it is. So this is why um, if you did want to get into like the specifics of, of if you're interested in the male versus females, that's why you then include an interaction term. Because then the interaction term will be able to take that into consideration of both male and female. If you're interested in saying, I want to know what the male and female difference is. If there is no difference, then you can either maybe just include it in the model and just like set it at zero because there is no difference between males and females in this particular So we assume that's the same. Exactly. So yes. you assume it's the same. But you still take into consideration that there might be differences when it calculates the beta. What about error? We had an error during that was last time. Yeah, so the error um, the error is you can find out the error. I think it's like this. Is it this one? It's generally not really included in the in the, when you report on the model, okay. um, mainly because like when you calculate the estimates, you get the standard errors. And that kind of takes into consideration the fact that there is some differences with, um, like, there's error within the, the what you're estimating. Okay. So the errors are 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 the standard error. That's why you would include like the 95% confidence interval or whatever it is. Uh, right. And so yeah. if you were to calculate the, the murder rate, you would have to take into consideration the variability in that prediction based on confidence intervals of these or whatever you decide is the way. Okay, next. Is it making sense so far? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. good because uh, I, I used to work with SPSS. So uh, I think that the same with Stata. Uh, if you do not code in that in this way, you are not be I think you are not be able to understand what you're doing. Because if you just click button. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's not okay. I had stats course and I know about the integration, but if you if I do not uh, implement this in real uh, mm -hmm. work. Yeah, I really wish I had done this before my stats exam. <laughs> You still felt you did good though? Yeah. Good. I'm better. Which course do you have? I did um, THL7, I remember the first um, Spy Statistics for its score population help. Like R or SPSS? And the textbook, and it's like I mentioned, SAS, but it's good at all. Yeah, and he's an awesome teacher. I just, you know, sometimes you go over something two or three or four times, and you finally get Yes, exactly. But like, maybe I answered them, but I had no idea what I was doing. No. Like, like, numbers. He has exams or assignments. But 
I'm gonna uh, midterm an exam and for all of that. A poll, examine. Yeah. Yeah. But what is that for? Uh, it's a really good feature. Uh, yeah, I'd yeah. like him to. I would love to do one time course on different parts of another time course. But for the sake of time, I'm going to do that. Yeah. 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 Sheila and Rodney and like several other PhDs who would probably took it and that's uh, useful. I think maybe that less so because they already like use R for their actual research, but definitely it's not like too basic or something like that. Okay. Now you can also use linear regression for ANOVAs. So if you want to find out the impact of different groups on so an ANOVA is just simply when y term is continuous and the predictor variable is discrete. So there's groups, so like sex or ethnicity. So in this case, I'm using a data set called IRIS. And when within IRIS, there's different like petal length, petal width, whatever, as well as species. <laughs> so just to show you the, the what species are, are there, there's three species. I'm doing this intentionally because I don't want to, if there was just only two, then that then that's no longer an ANOVA, that's just essentially a t-test. So I want to show three because then that's an ANOVA. But I want to show you how you do it in, in, in uh, linear regression because, well, I'll ask you this later, but get to this first. Uh, so why do you have iris uh, dollar sign in species? So iris <coughs> is the data set. Yes, yes. And dollar sign says take the species uh, column. So you don't need iris. anything. We just need the. Right. So it's not everything uh, of the output. If, if yes. within yeah within iris because I only wanted to show species. species. So one of the let me ask you this: Why would I choose to do linear regression over using an ANOVA? What advantage does it give me? Linear regression versus an ANOVA. The Are you both familiar enough with ANOVAs? Both. Thinking out loud, <laughs> yeah, I could probably reason it out. So, an ANOVA is an analysis of variance. You know, it's called that. What you're trying to do is compare the means of multiple groups. Yeah. With a linear regression, what you're trying to do is design a model that creates a line of the best fit that relates to continuous variables uh, well, that I mean it doesn't really have linear regression question, yeah linear regression has to have continuous variables yes. as the y yeah. but the predictors can be wherever they want okay you want to take a step why why choose ANOVA oh you didn't really answer the question why yeah, why would yeah. you choose ANOVA um, over why would you choose I mean linear regression over right like you could have an ANOVA within the linear Model, but you can't have a linear regression. <laughs> yeah, that's a, like kind of a cop out answer, but yeah, that's, that's what you were getting at. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> you want to try? No. Why? Why? Um, that's almost it, it's one of the one of the aspects. Yeah. But you want to? Why would you choose one or the other? Regression. What's? Uh, why? Why would you choose linear regression versus ANOVA, or ANOVA versus linear regression? Uh, I think mostly of the of the continuous variables. What do you mean? 
I mean that if I have BMI, for example, if I have BMI, instead of using uh, with a one over, I can I have to make BMI groups. Mm-hmm. Let's say normal is in there. With the regression, I use BMI as a continuous variable. So uh, this reduces sensitivity of the test. Mm-hmm. Well, what about the case where you have the predict the the outcome variable being continuous and the predictor variable being categorical? So species is categorical. There's three groups. So in this particular case, why would you choose linear regression versus? Oh, instead of using three groups? There's three groups, yeah. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the, main, the main reason why you choose, this, this is more of my opinion, but um, in many ways, uh, ANOVA is not nearly as powerful. So one of the biggest things is that ANOVA works really well when the sample sizes are all the same. Oh. But how many times do you have a case where your sample size is exactly the oh, same? Never. Exactly. Is it an assumption? I didn't know that. It is an assumption, yes. Um, it also does not how to handle, uh, depending on, on this particular issue, it doesn't know how to handle like missing this very well. So like you could do like repeated measures. Yes, um, I don't know. Repeated measures in ANOVAs kind of a shitty way of like looking continuously at some groups. Um, but, or if you were to have like some very different variability within each, so another assumption of ANOVA is that their variances are pretty much very similar. And they have to be independent? Um, I'm not sure about that. Because I think that the mixed models are better than repeated measures on ANOVA. Yeah, well, because, that's yes, of because the, of the independence. Yes, yes. Um, so in this case, the reason why you choose uh, linear regression. So in this particular case, there's not a whole lot of difference because like the groups are the same. But the linear regression is still more powerful because it lets you predict what kind of length will be. ANOVA doesn't let you predict. It just says there's a difference. Here's the p-value. And you guys have already heard my rant about p-values. I don't know if you heard of my rant about p-values. Uh, I, you, you, I, I think about, uh, did you mean it with comparison with uh, CIs, confidence intervals? Uh, just in general, p-values just in general. Oh, no, no. Next, in two weeks, in two weeks, I'm going to go over p-values. It's like, yeah, I don't want to get into it right now. I'm going to save that for next week. Yeah, for next week. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of useless that way because it doesn't give you a prediction of it. Science is about predicting, right? You want to predict what will be if you knew this information. So we'll find out the answer to something that, that, that's 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 uh, like repeatable. That's what a prediction is. It's like you're saying, I predict that if an asteroid were to go down to, onto Toronto, it would obliterate Toronto. I would also like to say that about the predictions because it gives you the risk, right? Yeah. But I was afraid to say the word prediction because really? it <laughs> it assumes, I don't know, it, is it assuming so many other things? Does it assume? assume For linear regression? Or, yes. or uh, if you want to do a prediction, you have the time, cause effect, and all this. So. You're saying like when you report your results, you're like nervous to say I can predict something? Because yes, because like of all, the, all the things. It depends you, on what you're doing. Because if you're doing an ANOVA, you can't really say I'm predicting something uh, because ANOVA doesn't do that for you. Yeah, not compare. Right? Actually, compares. Yeah, it just compares the means. There's no like prediction. A prediction requires some type of like model yes. of what you're trying to understand, um, like a climate model. Model. If you say like if the Antarctic ice Antarctic ice sheet will like melt off then we, we predict that weather patterns are going to be like crazier. Um, and you have like a model based on past data and like data that's coming in continuously. So like you're, you're predicting what will be. But with an ANOVA, you can't do that. There's no saying like, all I know is that the, the, the groups are different. All I know is the means are different. And like means, whatever. 
seriously, who the fuck cares? But with this, so in this case, if you look at this, like, uh, so let's get to the, the actual model. Right? Can you guys like kind of describe what's going on? Try to try to put this into a formula, which then can then you can then use to be able to understand what what the, the linear regression is doing. You're saying that um, if you know the species, the, the y is the total length, the x is the species. So you're saying if you know the species, then you can predict the total length. Yes. Um, from iris. Yes. But why is there two species? Instead of three? Instead of three. Because... It gets down to how... If, if it gets down to how the model takes takes into consideration discrete variables, remember everything converts down to zero to numbers. So it's, if it's a continuous variable, it's like from zero to whatever, or from negative to whatever, infinity to negative infinity. It's a continuous variable. So in that case, it's zero, one, two. Uh, zero That's is, a number though. Yes. Because there's three. So it's zero, one, and two? But if you want something to be able to, it, be binary. it has to be binary. Because so if you throw something into the model, how do you make it so that you say, based holding everything else constant, so zero, so that, like in this case, species very, uh, very C color, what would zero be? If we were to translate this into, into the equation, what would zero be? Let's write out the equation, actually. So petal length is equal to um, 1.46 RC color times 2 point plus virgin make When you write the the equation with the dollars, I think I'm doing something wrong. What? Do you have to keep enter? Uh, yeah. Or um, control enter. And then save it. Uh, options. I have them. I have the first. Now I don't know what's going on. Maybe just do and then try. Just control it. If then is start. Yeah. Okay. Maybe close it and open it again. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I will just write yeah. things and follow it from here. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's solve for this. If we want to see the role of species 
in the, this particular species on petal length, what do we have to do? Set originally to zero. Yes, sets it to zero and set this uh, to one. So, so now the, the yes. species is this, is a one being true, virginica being false, so zero. So it gets rid of this, you get this, virginica times this, so one, so that converts to this, plus this, the petal length for virginica will tend to be 1.46 plus 2.79. If we want to know what virginica is, what do we do? Zero, there. Zero and one. Now what if we wanted to know what setosa was? If both of these are set to zero, what's the default? I guess. It's setosa, the only other group. And so setosa is the intercept. Okay. So what what this in the past, um, this so these are called dummy variables. So when you have like a, a, a discrete variable that includes more than two groups, so like in this case there's three, you have to you have to manually create dummy variables so that it's zero one, zero one. Uh, and so on. Uh, R does this under the hood, so it just does it automatically for you. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. So what do these numbers then represent? It's the estimates. The estimates, but in more simpler terms? The effect. The biological meaning? It would be changes to re-intercept. I'll show you. So, I'm taking the plot, petal length by species. So species are on the bottom, petal length is on the side. 1.46, setosa, approximately 1.46. What does that line mean? It's the mean. 2.47 plus 1.46 is going to be almost four, three. three four, five. Yeah, about like yeah. almost four, or uh, almost five, right? Uh, one half. and a half plus two. It should be like around this. Yeah. I think this is actually the median, so the mean will be lower. Uh, but again, this is the mean. And then Virginica, 4.9 plus 1.46. It's approximately, yeah, five and a half. That's right, right. So these are all just means. So it gives you the means um, automatically. I mean, you could do that in, in, in uh, ANOVA. Uh, you can either calculate it manually yourself, or I think if you do some fiddling with ANOVA, it'll give you the means. But like the linear regression will just automatically give you the means if you just supply it with like what I'm going to know. Then the power comes of using the no, the linear regression is that you can then include confounding variables, controlling for or whatever you want. So this can be based down into like just a, a, a linear uh, t-test too, for example. So a t-test would be, again, varicosa, like let's say sex. But sex, intercept, and then weight, for example. You now know what the t-test is, the difference between the two groups, because then it'll give you up there. And it's more powerful because then it says, I can then predict for you, rather than the t-test says, there's just a difference. It can't tell you anything else. If there's a difference there, then you have to decide what that difference is by, by continuing the calculation. But the linear regression will then do that for you. Um, this is why, like, more formal modeling is, I say, is more powerful and should be favored over things that just tell you that there's a difference there. Because just knowing the difference doesn't, scientifically, doesn't really help you. Right? If you're doing an experiment, you want to know what the effect will be if you do something to this thing. If you say, like, if I, if I change this, if I feed rats this particular thing, what will it actually change? 
how will it change the rat's weight or the rat's health? You want to know precise, precisely how it will change rather than just being like, here's a plot showing what's different and then saying there's a difference. Is there any good reason to do a knock -on? A really good reason? I personally don't think so. I mean, you could probably talk to some statisticians that say, oh yeah, it's, there's, a good, there's good reasons. Um, but when you have the ability to predict something, I think it's always favorable over something that just tells you that there's a difference there. Or rather, the difference that is seen This is when we get into the p value because all the, the the nova does is just says that there's that there is a significant difference within the stuff but uh, i don't want to see that that's the other thing is like the nova just relies on the p value and like the p value itself is not really that useful with the with the with the linear regression you're not tied to the p value you're tied to like something that's a little bit more formal which is the model the equation because that's what life is, is basically, most of life is mathematical model, like math. It's not just the p-value. What does that mean? One of the, for me, one of the biggest assumptions of our measures, especially for experiments, is dependence. Because it's the same experiment, the same people, or the same rats. Yeah. You can see it's data that's independent. That's why you wouldn't use a nova. It's actually the same. Mm -hmm. um, I want to show something. Mm. That's what I want to show. Okay. I'm going to show you also how linear regression is basically the same thing as so, as a uh, correlation. And why I'm, I'm trying to say, like, well, I'll, I'll get to So if we go to uh, first load up library dplyr, we're going to do iris mutate each one's scale. Uh, pedal and length. Core, yes, pedal length and yes, settle.
Okay, so all I'm doing is so, so mutate each. What that does is it, it takes these columns and uh, applies the scale function to it. So all that scale does, if you remember what I, it's just the mean center with one step, with one unit being one standard unit deviation. So you can confirm the mean is zero, the mean is zero. So um, does it assume that it has to follow the normal distribution? Yeah, yeah, it does. So it. So if it doesn't, I mean. They they. In uh, general, log like, them. Huh? They log them. Sorry. Um, if if uh, the variable doesn't follow the normal distribution, uh, they they log the variable. If Beforehand? No, no. Okay. The the scale will. In, in general, it doesn't really matter if a variable is not normally distributed because very rarely it is. And it doesn't, like, in linear regression, it doesn't really matter if it's normally distributed or not. Um, because linear regression is, is powerful enough to be able to take an that, that robust enough to be able to handle that. Um, scaling, it still preserves the, the relative position. So like if 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 there is a, a non-normal distribution, like somebody who's at this end, when it's scaled, they'll still be at this end. It's just that the value will be different, that's all. Um, so, you, so like I said, you can confirm the sepal length, zero, pedal length, zero. And if you run correlation, the correlation is 0.87, so that's pretty high. And then if you run linear regression on these scaled variables, so these are scaled, keep in mind. What's the estimate? So E minus one is just, you bring it back one, right? So it's 0 0.87. They're exactly the same. So, so what does that mean? The the correlation between pedal length and sepal length are the same as the data. What is what does that actually mean? What that means is that for one standard deviation unit increase in sepal length. Um, oh, that's how they're related. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's the same as the slope. It's the same as the slope. Cool. Because it's a linear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the the correlation coefficient is simply looking at the slope when two variables are scaled. And if you look at the formula of how you calculate this versus how you calculate this, they're pretty much exactly the same when you break it down. Because this will contain um, like standardizing, so using the standard deviation. And this uses the standard deviation to be able to calculate the correlation coefficient. So the reason why I'm saying this is like, even with correlation, essentially it's just a linear equation. What, what does the other slope mean, the intercept? So the intercept is just- Oh, the intercept point. It's just the mean of, well, let, all right, second. <laughs> um, if you were to make the formula again, pedal length is equal to intercept uh, plus sepal length times this. So if this is set to zero, the thing that remains is this, which yeah. is it's the, the, the average the mean of, of, of uh, sepal length. And this is such a small thing, minus 16, that's essentially zero which makes sense because we already know that the scale variable has a mean of zero. How come it's not? I guess, yeah, that was Precision, it's just math, uh, computationally. So it's technically zero. It's technically zero. Technically not zero, but almost zero. Yeah, that's what I meant, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. computationally, like zero, unless it's an integer, there's right. no such thing as zero. Right, it's, it's and very, anything very that, Yeah, okay, yeah. You understand? Yeah. yeah. How did you learn all of these? So that, what, that's what I, one thing I was going to say is like, 
Um, I'll put this link up, but I have a blog that I very rarely, but sometimes write on. And I wrote one because I wanted to understand some simple stats. And so I just went through line by line of like first starting out with linear regression and trying to understand what linear regression was. I used both equations and I used uh, R to be able to like look at both. So I went through the equation and I started with variance because that's the one of the basic statistics. So then I calculated the, the then I what figured out what the formula for the variance was, put it into terms in R to see what the thing was. So in this case, like um, so like this, this is this this formula here is exactly the same as this formula here, and you get 12. In R, there's a formula called variance or var, which calculates variance, and it's exactly the same. So I just was confirming both sides. Um, and then I kind of plotted it to see, well, how, how does that look? Like, how does the variance look? You can't really plot variance because it's just a number. Um, but if you keep going down. So what is that then? That's just the distribution. That's all that is. I'll show you, I'll show you in a second. Uh, the reason why you use standard deviation and why it's typically presented is standard deviation can tell, tell you direction and it can tell you magnitude of the spread. So it can tell you how far from the mean some, something is in both directions. Right. While the variance doesn't tell you anything like that, it just tells you kind of like in general how wide it is, yes. So then if you find a formula, then again, did the raw formula, found that, standard deviation. Uh, this is the, the R way of doing things, SD, so it calculates that. It's exactly the same. And then in this case, you can actually find out the spread. You can plot the standard deviation. So like this is the mean, and this is uh, one standard deviation each way. So it kind of gives like an indication of what it looks like. Um, and then you look at covariance, so that's the difference between two variables, so covariance, because linear regression is always about at least two, generally at least two. So you can say this is the formula, this is the raw formula, there's the covariance. Covariance of, of x and x is exactly the same thing as the variance of x. So actually, you learned anything by everything by yourself. Yeah. This is the yes. Well, I really wanted to show this because, like, it really helped me to be able to understand. So here is what what I was talking about. It is like if you break down how the betas are calculated, you realize that the betas, if you start breaking it down, are essentially so. This formula here, the covariance of x and y times standard deviation of x times standard deviation of y is essentially is exactly the same formula as the correlation coefficient. Since these are standard deviations of y and standard deviations of x, if you set them to zero because they're scaled, zero and zero, it gets rid of this. So what you have left is the, is the correlation coefficient. So mathematically, you can find out they're exactly the same thing. And and then again, you can plot it because, like, like math is fine, stats are fine when you put up number like formulas, but like formulas, like I said, like if you can't, what does that mean? So you put that into like a, a plot, and that gives you an indication of what is actually like you visualize it. So this is like usually how I learn about stats. It's like you break it down, you try to do it in R, and you try to understand the math of it. Um, and then you visualize it so you can get a, an actual picture of what's going on. The other thing too is that if you do do this, um, you get a better sense of, of what the assumptions are. So one of the assumptions of regression, and this is the Pearson correlation, one of the, the assumptions of the Pearson correlation is that essentially it's more or less normally distributed because you're assuming that there, so this is the mean 
and this is the distance. So like I said before, uh, the standard deviation, so standard deviation is assuming that they're equally distributed on both sides of like one and minus one and so on. So within the assumption, you know that then correlation is assuming that there's some type of normal distribution. And assuming that there is also, yeah, at least some type of normal distribution. It's just another way of like really getting uh, a handle on like stats. And it's fun writing up this stuff and then putting it on a blog. And it's so pretty. Look at the formula. Yes, they are. Absolutely. Yes. Those are with R markdown, right? I, I wrote this in R markdown, yeah. In uh, HTML, there's this thing called MathJax, which renders these uh, formula. But yeah, OK. Well, that's done. Any other questions? Nope. Well, the way. <laughs> Definitely, yeah.